Hi, today we are in Barcelona with GetApp. Christoph, who are you and what do you do? So, good, good morning, I'm Christoph, I'm the CEO of uh, GetApp. I have uh, founded this company five years ago with uh, Manuel, my uh, co-founder. Uh -huh. And we are a marketplace for business applications where businesses of all size come and discover new applications for their business. Okay. And how did you come up with this business idea? We, both Manuel and I, uh, in our previous jobs, uh, we are facing this issue, this pain point about uh, uh, how to get product distributed uh, in the new world of uh, uh, cloud computing and, and, and online. Uh, and we realized that uh, there was no solution really in place, and uh, so we decided to build one. What did you do before you started this company? I've started uh, my career at NCR, which is, uh, which is not a startup, it's a big American company that has been there for, for ages, and I spent 15 years there. Uh, I ended up being the uh, VP of Global Marketing, uh, and then decided you know, to do something a little bit more entrepreneurial. So I built you know, our first startup, uh, which was in the uh, data integrity uh, and quick, uh, security. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this uh, startup eventually failed. Uh, and uh, that was my previous experience before GetApp. Did you found this uh, startup or did you just join them? Actually, I joined the startup, but that's a very, very, very big Ah, okay. Okay, yeah. great. And can you tell us a little bit more about the business model of GetApp? GetApp has two uh, value propositions for two main stakeholders. For businesses, uh, we help them discover a business application wherever they need to find them. Mm -hmm. So it can be you know, searching on the web, it can be searching on their mobile, uh, it can be when they use another application and they want to find uh, uh, an additional feature that is integrated you know, with the application they're currently using. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our value proposition to them. Wherever you are, you'll find new applications that are suitable for the business and GetApp will help you discover the right one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> our, biggest, our second biggest stakeholder are obviously our, our clients. Uh, so developers of business applications, it can be uh, software as a service providers or mm -hmm. native mobile applications. And for these uh, companies, we serve as uh, an online distribution channel. So we are generating leads for them online. So they come to GetApp and uh, they give us information about their product. We review their product independently. Uh, and then, you know, we organize this information so the people who really need their application find them. Okay, and for these businesses, can you uh, cluster them uh, related to some industries or so? Maybe you have more focused on one industry? Today we, we, we mostly deal with what we call horizontal applications. So applications that offer a feature that can be used in any industry. Okay. So as an example, a customer relationship management tool mm -hmm. or project management tool or an accounting uh, uh, online software. So this is currently the core of our business, but the market is developing a lot towards vertical applications. Mm -hmm. So application for the life science industry, application for the retail industry or e-commerce industry. So more and more we are going into this space. So rather than serving you know, verticals today, we, we serve more horizontal solutions, mm -hmm. but you know, uh, verticalizing you know, our, our marketplace is definitely on the agenda. Okay, and um, so the revenue model basically works like this, that you get, um, let's say, um, yeah, a pay for the lead from the app developers? It works very much like, uh, like Google, so we feature um, applications mm -hmm. uh, and we get paid for that, so it's pretty clear for the client, you know, for the end user that uh, the application we are looking at has been featured. Mm -hmm. And then we get paid per click or per lead, and sometimes we also have uh, revenue sharing agreements with, uh, mm -hmm. with our clients. Uh, in terms of corporate strategy, what do you think are the main uh, one, two, three uh, drivers that yeah, make your company stand out of the crowd? First of all, the main market driver is that more and more companies are uh, uh, testing and, and, and buying you know, cloud-based software or native mobile software uh, just because it's uh, easier you know, to uh, get started with it and also it's, uh, it's cheaper than uh, traditional software. So today it represents about 7% of the total business software market, mm -hmm. but it's growing you know, much, much faster than the uh, traditional software world. And there's no uh, established distribution channel uh, 
for this new uh, part of, uh, of the software industry. And this is a space you know, we want to grab. So GitHub's intention is to become uh, the dominant uh, distribution platform for the business applications, online business application industry. So that's to talk about you know, the, uh, the global market. What has made us successful in the last five years? It's, uh, it's two main things. The first one is uh, customer service. So we are extremely focused on making our clients happy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we never compromise on the quality of the traffic we were sending to them, the quality of the leads you know, we were sending to them. And if our clients, for some reasons, are unhappy, we are always on top of it you know, to make sure that we understand you know, yeah. the bottom of why and how we can fix it. The second thing uh, is from day one, we've been very clear that uh, you know, we wanted to uh, turn this business into a profitable business a, 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 as soon as possible. Yeah. So we've been very focused on, on, on selling and selling you know, directly to the advertiser. So I see a lot of young entrepreneurs you know, who believe that you know, they've got a great idea and they put it on the web and expect you know, to people to come and buy. And um, it usually doesn't happen, especially in the B2B world, okay, which yeah. is our world. Yeah. Uh, you need to establish a very close relationship with your clients. And it means you know, uh, talking on the phone with them, meeting with them on a regular basis, understanding their needs, uh, their needs, you know, really paying attention to them. And, uh, and this is both, you know, my co-founder and I, you know, we're coming, you know, from this uh, culture of where you're, you're nurturing really uh, the yeah. relationship with the client. And, uh, and we've put this into practice. And uh, this has been uh, our main difference here. And what uh, a type of customers did you focus first when you started this company? Well, anyone. <laughs> anyone who wanted, you know, to join our platform. Uh, but, you know, we started with... Uh, with, uh, let's say, you know, the smaller or mid-side, you know, uh, business software developers. Uh, and as we gain credibility in the market, uh, you know, we manage to break into the much larger accounts. So, you know, you need, you need, you need to prove yourself, you know, before you, uh, sure. you can attract, you know, uh, the big players in this world. Uh, and this is what we did. So we still, you know, uh, do our best, you know, to cater for small, smaller clients. Uh, because you know they were there at the beginning and they are the ones you know who gave us a chance yeah, yeah, you know yeah. to succeed uh, but clearly you know as we are growing the business you know we also need to uh, to pay attention to, um, to the bigger tickets ah, sure. in terms of marketing development uh, in this kind of distributing of apps what is the uh, roughly global um, market size and maybe in the US where you're more mainly focused Yes, we, we focus today in, uh, mostly in the North American market, which represents uh, two thirds of the global market. So, and we went there, you know, from scratch. So we never intended, you know, to start anywhere else but in, uh, in the US. Although we are based in Barcelona, uh, and uh, and today this represents uh, ninety percent of our market. Uh, and just to give you an example, you know, um, the, the, the second markets are. UK, Germany, uh, but each of them represents about 6% or 7% of the total market size. So it's pretty obvious where you need to get started. Sure. Now we are starting to branch out into new countries. Uh, we are French, so we picked France you know, as uh, our test bed you know, to expand in new uh, geographies. And we're actually launching uh, getapp.fr uh, next month. Um, so that gives you the size of the market today. It's, uh, it's about you know the software as a service market, uh, which is our core market. Uh, it's about uh, forty billion dollar market uh, today. It depends, you know, which analyst you know sure. you talk to. Uh, and uh, in terms of marketing spend uh, in this industry, which is you know the market we are going after, it's currently about two billion dollar. Increasing pretty, uh, pretty uh, rapidly. And this two billion is only made for, let's say, online marketing uh, and uh, mobile marketing. Yeah, I'm only talking about online marketing. Okay. And the spend in percentage of sales and marketing costs, you know, for business developer, uh, software uh, business software developer, uh, online marketing spend represents roughly, you know, between fifteen and twenty percent of their total. Oh, wow, okay. And um, as you said that you were branching into new countries mm -hmm. like France, etc. Um, did you 
buy the, the, the web domains in, in the first place uh, and securing your stuff? Because I can uh, imagine, for example, with us it's the same. Yeah? I mean, we have some ideas where we want to go next. And, um, but maybe in two, three, four, five years, we, we don't know yet what we will do. Mm. And so we maybe we did not uh, yeah, secure them right now. We did a bit of that, but not as much as we should have uh, done. Uh, I mean, the main reason is that we bootstrapped this company initially. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that was our own money and we were pretty careful, you know, how to spend it. So we bought a few uh, uh, country domain names, but not that many. Yeah. And actually we let a very important one go because we just uh. didn't renew it, which was really stupid. So, you know, we, we make mistakes. Uh, but recently, you know, we went into uh, the market and bought, you know, as many uh, important uh, country domain names yeah. as we could, uh, which has costed us quite a lot of money. So did you raise some external money after you bootstrapped? Yeah, so we did in uh, 2011. We raised uh, a one million dollar seed round with uh, Narta Capital, which is one of the biggest uh, mm -hmm. VC in Spain. We are a very capital efficient company and, uh, and a profitable company now. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been very useful, you know, to get this seed round. But we've uh, really decided to grow and, and, and focus, you know, the whole space of the company. Uh, to keep control and, 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 and be independent, you know, uh, from uh, yeah. raising more money. Although this is something, you know, we may have to do uh, in order to uh, really fuel the growth, you know, to the level, you know, uh, we believe, you know, we should, uh, uh, we, we, we should do. So, yeah, that's where we are. At, at the point when you raised this money, um, have you been profit profitable already and just wanted to fuel your growth or? No, at the time we were not. Okay. Uh, so they helped us, you know, making some uh, important decisions that we would not have made, you know, okay. only bootstrapping. Uh, so that was very useful. Uh, but now we are in a situation where we are profitable. And if we raise money, it's more, you know, gross money yeah. and, and we do it in, in the right conditions for the good reasons. Okay, great. Christoph, um, we always try to uh, teach some first-time entrepreneurs or people interested in entrepreneurship on what not to do or what to focus on. And uh, imagine uh, your best friend uh, calls you and says, hey, Christoph, I've got a great business idea. What advice would you give them? I think the, the main advice, I mean, it's always difficult, you know, to say that to entrepreneurs because to, to, to be an entrepreneur, you need to be crazy. Uh, if you're not, you know, it's, it's not worth it. But they need to, to be... Uh, also very realistic about their own capabilities. So, uh, there, I mean, there are things we, we are good at and things we are not good at. Uh, and that's, good, that's true for me and for, for anybody, uh, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, so my, my, my biggest advice would be go and talk to um, people who have been there, uh, that have expertise, uh, ask them to do some sanity checks, you know, at every step, you know, of uh, the development of your business and learn from others. So uh, as entrepreneurs, we, we tend to be uh, over optimistic uh, and believe that, you know, we, we know it all and, uh, and it's not the case. So go out there, test your ideas with people, you know, who uh, can tell you, you know, whether you're, you're right or wrong or in the right directions. And at the end of the day, you make up your mind on whether you want to listen to them or not. But at least, you know, take this piece of advice, you know, from people, you know, who have uh, maybe more experience than you. Thank you very much, Christopher. No, you're welcome. Thanks for coming.